In the last video, we looked at how to create command line aliases specifically within the context of Git. Today, I wanna to show you 11 aliases that I use pretty regularly and that I think you might find pretty useful as well. So let's take a look. The first one we've got here is for managing JSON. If you're a developer who works on a REST API like I am, then you're probably copying and pasting snippets of JSON all day long. JSON Pretty Print is a great command line utility that will actually format a JSON snippet for you. I combine that with pbcopy and pbpaste. These are the command line utilities that macOS gives you for copying and pasting to your system clipboard. The first alias I've got here, JJ, will take whatever is currently on the clipboard, run it through JSON Pretty Print, and then put it back on the clipboard. I can show you that right now on my clipboard, I have this little bit of JSON unformatted. If we head to the command line and I run JJ, it looks like nothing happened. But now if I paste it, you can see that we actually have some formatted JSON. If you just want that JSON printed out to the command line after you formatted it, I use the alias JJJ for that. Of course, you can name these aliases whatever you want, but being able to format JSON quickly is incredibly handy. Let's look at the second one here, and this is creating directories. Often when you create a directory, your intention is to then CD into that directory. So why not have one command that does both? I can't take all the credit for this one. I think you'll see this in a lot of people's dot files, but it's a simple function that will first make the directory and then CD into it. Now, when you've got a function like this, it's a little more complex than just an alias. The dollar sign one here is actually whatever the first argument that you pass to the alias is. So if we head back to the command line here and I run take some directory, you can see that we've moved from my home directory into home directory slash some directory, and we actually created that directory. If we do a quick ls in here, you'll see there's no directories, but if we take another directory, now we've created and moved into that directory. So I'll just head back up to my home directory here. Take is very simple, but I use it all the time. I basically never create a directory without using take. All right, what's the next one? Very simple one. I'm clearing my terminal all the time. I like to keep things clean and organized. One character is better than five. Okay, managing displays. This is an interesting one. This one is interesting because this alias is less about typing fewer characters, although it is pretty short, as you can see. It's more about capturing the complex configuration for a particular command line utility. In this case, I'm using display placer. This is a great way to configure one or more monitors that you're frequently connecting and disconnecting your laptop to. I'm often moving my laptops somewhere else to work and then coming back to this desk to connect it to the two monitors I have here. And sometimes the resolution is wrong or the orientation is wrong when I just plug my monitors back into the laptop. Display Placer allows you to capture a particular monitor uh, arrangement and resolution settings. As you can see here, this is a pretty long and complex command. Let me turn on word wrapping here. You can see I've got two different monitors and it captures the resolution, the hertz, color depth, scaling, all of that type of stuff. And this makes it really easy for me to very quickly configure those monitors without having to open the macOS preferences and fiddle with that every time I reconnect the laptop. So this is definitely part of speeding up my workflow. All right, number five is a pretty quick and easy one here. We've aliased sourcing our ZSHRC file to a single character S. If you're like me and you're often making changes to your shell configuration throughout the day, you wanna be able to quickly introduce those changes to your shell environment without having to restart your terminal all the time. Being able to quickly source your terminal config file is an excellent way to do this. So having that single character definitely saves me a lot of time. Moving on to number six, we have some Docker stuff. I use Docker a lot for work, as I'm sure many of us do, and so these are just two of the aliases that I use for Docker. First of all, I alias Docker itself to just D. So I'm running DPS, DPS-A all the time to see what containers I'm managing. But then I also have this function dclear. What this does is essentially nuke my current Docker containers and gives me a clean environment to get started. As you can see, I'm killing and then removing all of my Docker containers. I'm also removing all of my images and pruning out a lot of volumes. This might be a little bit to scorched earth for you, depending on what you're trying to do with Docker. This works for me, but the idea here is have some way to quickly and easily reset your Docker containers to whatever state you need them to be in to do your best work. All right, number seven is another small but powerful one, and this is trimming strings. 
If you do a lot of command line work, then you probably will need to be able to trim white space off the front and the back of a string at some point in some of your scripts. I find this particularly useful when I'm grepping for code within a repository. I'm looking maybe for particular instances of a variable or a particular pattern, and I wanna be able to count that. Often I need to be able to trim white space at the beginning or the end of the line off before I can do a, a unique dash C or something like that in the shell so that all of the lines where that pattern is used uh, actually look the same regardless of how far indented they are. Let's move on to number eight. This is a fun one. This is a quick way to make notes for yourself as you're working on the command line. This function has three echo lines and all three of them append to a drafts file in my home directory. The first one puts the date, which will include a timestamp. The second one is echoing dollar sign at. And what that means is just capture all of the arguments that are passed to this function. Basically, you can just write your text after the word note, and all of that will go into your draft file. And finally, we have an empty line. We can take a quick look at this one in action. Maybe I can write note, uh, these are some fun aliases. And now if I cut out the drafts file, you can see that we have our timestamp here, we have our note, and then we have our empty line. Great way to capture some quick notes as you're working on the command line. All right, number nine, better file listings. You've probably seen these before, and so I've got two versions to show you here. What you see at the bottom here, these bottom two are probably more typical. The very bottom one is aliasing a common misspelling. When you're trying to ls in a directory, maybe sometimes you accidentally hit sl. Why not say Save yourself the time of having to type that again and just alias sl to ls. Here's another common example. Maybe you want to regularly use a set of flags. So for example, I like to use just the letter l to do a file listing with the full details and not just the file names. Now, I actually haven't done that, as you can see, because the top three aliases that use exa are what I use instead. Exa is like a drop-in replacement for ls that gives some nice color coding, and so I prefer to use exa. And so if you have that installed, which you can just get through a brew install exa, you could use the top three here, but if you just want to use ls, the bottom two will give you the same setup. So better file listings are always incredibly handy. Here's another quick and easy one. Maybe you want to be able to serve some static files from a directory really quickly. It's not hard to spin up an HTTP server with Python. So you can do this with Python 3-M and it will start up the HTTP server module in the current directory. You could actually pass this a port number as well. So when calling this, I could run something like I could run something like serve 8088 to run my server on that particular port. Really nice, easy way to start up an HTTP server. Okay, we've got one more, and this is better trash management. I'm sure you've used RM before. Maybe you've even accidentally used RM on a file that you needed to get back later, and that's a real pain. Using RM as an alias for trash, I found gives me a little bit more peace of mind. You can use this on at least Mac OS. I'm sure there are other versions available for other operating systems, but brew install trash will give you the trash tool, which instead of actually deleting the file, via a hard delete, moves that file to the system trash bin. I remember once trying to clean out a repository with rm-rf, and it actually turned out that I was in my home directory instead of in the directory I thought I was. This utility would have saved me from the pain that I went through in that experience. So definitely consider something like this in your toolbox. All right, I know I said there were only gonna be 11 here, but I wanna give you a bonus tip, and that is alias and unalias. These are system commands. Obviously, we've been using alias to create aliases the whole time, but on your command line, if you just run alias, you'll actually get a list of all of the aliases that you have defined. So that can be a really handy way to see what environment you have set up. And the other one is unalias. And this is a great way to remove unalias from your environment. Uh, if you don't know maybe where that's coming from or you wanna temporarily remove it, unalias is a great way to do that. Well, that is the list of 11 aliases that I find to be most useful in my day-to-day -day work. Of course, that doesn't include any of my Git aliases, which we talked about in the last video. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.